In this video, we are doing a clone effect, but we are getting a little bit more advanced than our simple clone effect because we are going to add some cross movement into this. So as you just saw from this first example, there is a cross of movement. Generally the clone effect, you keep the camera static and you make sure that each character stays in a zone and they never cross over the line. And essentially we just chop these sections together to create our clone effect. It's really quick, really simple. That's the most straightforward way to approach a clone effect. But if you want to get more advanced and you really want to start selling the illusion of this clone effect, then you want some interaction and you want characters to pass in front of each other. So we're gonna start this technique the exact same as we would do with the simple clone effect. We're just gonna place the camera on the tripod. Now, the reason why we do the tripod is because we can't recreate the same camera movement for each character unless we have a camera robot, which I don't know about you, but I don't have a camera robot. They're pretty expensive. So to so save the time and the money, let's just go for good old tripod shot. Now to make this more advanced, rather than having camera movement, we'll have movement from the characters. Now you can plan out the choreography for each different character. You want to take them on a journey. So maybe your first character walks across the screen and sits on a chair next to your first character. And then your second character can get up and then it can go do something else. Whatever it is, you just want to film all of these actions. Take after take. So we'll do character one, character two, character three. And you also want to pay very close attention to the timing. Because if, for example, you want your first character to walk towards a chair that your second character is in and then sits down after the second character gets up, you want to make sure that the timing is going to work because they can't sit where the other person is already sat. You can have them crossing, but you need to also be aware of their spatial awareness. So there's a lot more to think about here, but the results are worth it. Now, of course, because we've got characters crossing in front of each other, we are going to have to jump into Adobe After Effects and do some rotoscoping. So once you've got your footage, let's go ahead and do that. So once you've got your video footage, it's time to jump into Adobe After Effects and begin the editing process. Now, the first thing that you want to do is just combine these two clips to so place them on top of each other. And with the clip above, you just want to press T to load opacity. And you're just going to pull the opacity down until you can see both clips. And now you just want to line these up. So as you can see in my action, if I just focus on this one, this character waves and then he gets up and leaves. So this roughly around the seven mark, seven second mark is when they leave. And then this character, they wave roughly at about the same time. So let's play this back and let's see how this plays out. I'm just going to drop the quality because we've got two clips happening at the same time. So here we go. This character comes in. They sit down on the sofa. They have a nice little wave. This character leaves, except as you can see, this character's eye is looking further away. So it's supposed to be there following. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to nudge this one back just a little bit. So the eye line is now here. As you can see, the eye line is where it should be following the character out. Cool. So there we go. So we've got the action now lined up. So now what we want to do is we want to go through the process of actually combining these two clips together. So clip number one is going to start here. So clip number one is going to be fine with a simple split screen up until here. And then this is where we need to rotoscope over this footage. Now, as you can see, the cushion is different in this frame. So what I'm going to do on this clip here, we're going to make a cut. So this clip is literally just going to be a basic split screen. There we go. So this is just our basic split screen effect. If we turn the opacity of this one up, you can see we've got our two characters now combined. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, when I sit down, I do make an adjustment to the cushion, which is around here. So this means the line can't be blended on the sofa or at least at that point on the sofa. So it needs to be further over here. Here we go. And even though there is a little bit of change, it's not a massive change, not enough for me for one to change that. So I'm just going to go into the mask 
create a mask feather. And there we go. So the character is now just going to walk out of this frame. We'll just get rid of this bit. They walk out of the frame. And then this is where we would need to rotoscope this character to walk in front of the other one. And then let's have a look. When do we pass back? We pass back around here. So I'm going to use this door line as the blend point. So let's start this clip here. This is going to be our blend point for this part of the frame. Here we go. So we'll turn the opacity back up on this side. I'm just going to add some feathering just to blend those two worlds together. Like so. Cause so this is when our character breaks the illusion. So we need to rotoscope from here. So I'm just going to copy this layer. I'll make a cut here. Let's just turn this off for a second. And then we see our new character emerge here. Now there does need to be a little of a blend, a transition. So we'll take that a little bit further and make the cut here. So what we're doing, we're using a basic split screen effect at the start. We're finishing with the split screen effect, but for the crossover section of this, obviously we can't do a split screen because we're crossing in front of our other character. So for this, what I need to do, if I just isolate this layer and I turn off the mask, for just this few seconds, this one or two seconds, I need to go through and I need to rotoscope this character. So we're going to go to the very beginning of that clip. We're going to go up to the roto brush tool up here. Make sure the quality is set to full because this makes a big difference in the quality of the rotor. Then we'll double click the footage, go to fit up to 200% or just fit. And now from here, we are just going to draw around our character like this. There we go. Try and do a good job of this, but we can make amendments in a sec if it's not perfect. So as you can see, I need to make some amendments here. So if I hold option on the keyboard on Mac, I believe it's alt on windows, but correct me if I'm wrong. And then we just want to remove the parts of the frame that aren't the person. So we don't want the sofa. We don't want the carpet. That looks about right. There is a little bit of chain that's missing here. So I can add this back in. There we go. So once you're happy with the look of that, you can just press the space bar and After Effects is just going to get to work. Although, did you notice it's included this gym weight just sneaking behind the sofa? So I'm going to go back to this second frame. I'm going to remove that. And now when I scrub forward, it should amend that for me. There you go. It's amended it for me. Now there's a little bit of wall coming through between the chain. So we're just going to amend that. And this is what you want to do. You want to go through frame by frame and make these amendments. Now this chain is getting left behind. For the sake of this movement, I'm just going to leave it out. Here we go. That's doing a good job. So far the chain is back in. Got a really nice job here on this movement. Here we go. There will be a shadow, which we're going to have to try and recreate in a sec, but let's see how that affects things. And there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. So what we want to do now is we just want to select this view here, which is the toggle alpha overlay option. And we just want to play this. So you can see that's a pretty convincing cutout. So if we go back to the composition, and we unsolo this. Let's see all of that now combined. Now, because we have used the rotor brush, this is quite an intense effect. So this may slow the computer down quite substantially. But let's just render this out and see what we are working with. So here we go. We've transitioned into the cutout. As you can see from the outline, it's not perfect. We do need to smooth this out. And now we get the other frame come in. Here we go. It pops in. And we've transitioned back into this character. So let's have a look. So we've got split screen, roto, split screen. Now, unfortunately, you can see where the second split screen pops in because of that shadow changing the lighting. So what we're going to do, we're going to mask that in. So I'm just going to pull this clip back. Here we go. This is the point it's going to appear. We'll go somewhere around here. This is the point the clip can appear. 
and we're going to use the body to hide the mask. So here we go. This orange line is following my body. So if we go into masks, create a brand new keyframe on mask path, we're now going to move over a few seconds or a few frames, should I say. And again, we're going to follow that body. So you won't notice the lighting difference because the mask is now following the body rather than sticking to the wall. Here we go. We'll just do a few more, just one more. We'll just get that to line up to the wall like this. And now we can let that do what it needs to do. Of course, we do need to add a pinch more feathering there. Let's see how we're looking now. That's a lot better. That pop has now disappeared, but now we just need to work on this harsh line here. So if we go onto this clip, this is the rotoid layer. We'll go to Roto Brush and Refine Edge Tool. We could go in and do the Refine Edge Tool because that would give us a really nice soft edge. Or alternatively, for a very quick way out, we can just increase the feather. Because there's movement anyway, there would be a little bit of a, a motion blur. So let's see how that looks. But unfortunately, it's eating into my nose. So if that is the case, if you're struggling with that and it's starting to eat back into the face, then we could just go back to the very beginning. We'll hold down the rotor brush tool to refine to find the refine edge tool. We'll double click this and we're just going to zoom in on the face because this is where we're having the problems. And if I just zoom out a pinch, now we can just follow the outline of the face like this. Make sure you go a little bit wider than you need to. Not really wide, just a little bit wider. And then we'll just do the back of the head as well. Because we've got hair, it's going to be a bit softer. And again, there is movement, but we do want to try and retain the shape of the head. There we go. Now, this screen will change to black and white, as you can see. So white is my face. So you can see the color is the roto brush and the white is the actual footage. That's the refined edge finding the actual edge of the footage. So it did chop off quite a bit of my face. So now if we press space and we just let this render out like the roto brush rendered out, this should do a good job of finding the edge of the face. Now, as you can see, mine has just drifted off the frame. So I'm just going to stop that. I'll press the space bar, hold space, drag this back over. And now I'm going to press space again just to see this transition over. I just want to keep this zoomed in version so I can really be particular about this and make any changes if I need to. So just watch this, keep an eye on it, just make sure that it's doing exactly what it needs to do. It won't take you too long, especially if you've got a powerful computer, this won't take too long. We have transitioned now back into the real footage, so we can just get rid of that. We can go back to our composition window. And now when we render this out and we play this back, you'll notice we're on the split screen at the moment. Now we're transitioning into the rotoid version, but look at the face. It's so much more defined. It looks so much sharper. There's no way you would be able to tell that that was rotoscoped now. It looks really clean. Of course, the edge of the body here is a little bit harsh, but I don't think it's, it's such a quick moment. I don't think you would notice that, but people generally look at faces. So the face was quite a noticeable area. So let's see that in real time. Let's see how that plays back. Perfect. So that is the effect essentially now complete. But the problem is a lot of people now, because visual effects have become quite popular, a lot of people just associate static shots with all this could be fake. So let's add a little bit of fake camera movement in just to tie this together and just to break, like really keep the illusion. I don't want to shatter the illusion. I want this to look as real as possible. So I'm just going to highlight everything, right click, pre-compose. We could call this clone. Then I'm just going to press P on the keyboard to load the position going to hold the option button on Mac. I believe it's alt on Windows, but correct me if I'm wrong. We'll select the stopwatch icon and that will load up this window. And this is where we pop in the wiggle expression. So we type out wiggle, open brackets, and we'll just go for a small number to begin with. Let's go five comma 10. And then do not press enter because you'll break the expression onto a new line. So just click away from the wiggle box. And if we turn on the motion blur here, turn on the motion blur here. If you can't see that, then you need to select toggle switches slash modes. Now let's render this out and play this back and see how this looks. Of course, I've already noticed one problem. The problem is by doing the wiggle is we haven't filled in the edges. So if I toggle the alpha, you can see you've got this and this is just going to look like a black outline. So there's two ways of correcting this. You can go into motion tile. 
which is this. And you can go output width to go 150, output height to be 150, mirror the edges, and it will just fill those edges in for you. Alternatively, you could just scale in if that's quicker and easier for you, because I know the motion tile effect is quite heavy on the computer. So if your computer's struggling a bit, then just go for that option. But generally, I prefer motion tile because it means I'm not having to crop in. I'm not having to push in unnecessarily. You could do a nice scale out if you wanted. So we could maybe start maybe four seconds in is when we get back to 100% on the scale or five seconds. But at the very beginning, we could start at maybe 120 or maybe 110. We can convert both of those keyframes to easy ease keyframes just so that we get a nice soft animation. And now when we render this out with that nice zoom out at the beginning, with the camera movement, with the motion tile filling in the edges, this is what we get. It just ties it all together and it looks a lot more believable. Great. And there we go. That is the clone effect now complete. So I would just dynamic link this back into Premiere and just export this out. And there you go. That is the tutorial now complete. What did you think of it? Was it a decent tutorial? Do you feel like you learned something? If so, let me know in the comment section below. And if you've got any video ideas at all, if you want to see something cool and interesting in the next tutorial, you want to see something very specific, just let me know and I'll see if I can make a video for you in the future. But thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully I will see you on the next episode. See you there.